I'll try to make it educational. I'll probably leave you with a few things to think about until next time, but I'd like to start with something that uh, uh, I do every, every day. Uh, my wife does it. It's called uh, chakra clearing exercise. And uh, I'll just read you real quickly and then I'll get on with it. Uh, just as the physical spaces we inhabit require that we clear them periodically of clutter, that's what I'm doing, the energetic fields are a vital part of being, must also be cleared of old thoughts, energy, and emotions. Clearing your chakras and your restores and strengthens your connection to yourself and your divine inner wisdom. And I'll take another deep breath. And I'll, uh, I want to get to talking about my family a little bit. And uh, my dad back then uh, was... Um, really young when he made chief in 1943. Uh, he uh, joined the Navy in 1936. Uh, he went through boot camp and uh, his first duty station was the USS Tennessee and uh, he was out there in the China Sea. And uh, I think, I don't know, uh, most people may not think about this, but there was war before World War II, and my father was fighting in that war. He had, uh, on his medical record, 66 months of uh, hard combat duty during the war. I can't imagine it, just think about that, 66 months. My dad said in his medical records after the war, he said it was, God damn it, it was battle stations all the time. Uh, there's a picture of my dad on my book, Reconciliation, A Son's Story. I'll talk about that some other time. And uh, uh, that's his picture uh, on top uh, when he was serving on the USS West Virginia. Uh, in 1941, he was assigned to the ship. And there's my mom after they got married. And uh, uh, I'll talk more about my mom, but she was quite a... Uh, yeah, she was a tough woman, and uh, she showed it. But we'll talk about that later. And uh, But I'll get back to a couple of things here I wanted to share with you before we go forward, and then I'll read a um, quotation from one of my uh, father's uh, shipmates. He served with on the USS Belgrove in 1943, but... I'll tell you what I'd like to do with, uh, with this series. Uh, I'm going to be uh, uh, talking to you just about every day between now and uh, Pearl Harbor Day on December 7th, 1941. I started with that uh, yesterday. That was hard to do, folks. But thank you for bearing with me. And um, it's, uh, it was very healing. And I've been... Um, uh, convinced that this is what we need to do. We need to have a conversation. So I took a little notes about what uh, what I think we need to address uh, while I talk to you. And uh, I, uh, I think we should celebrate democracy. I think we should go back and take a look at what freedom looked like uh, back in our parents, grandparents and great grandparents day. I think we need to talk more about empathy and what that is. We need to really, really get into empathy. I had a hard time with that when I was uh, younger, but I'm a lot closer. It's a work in progress. Compassion, oh, that's a big word. And uh, of course, I've been doing a lot of work with that and also uh, mindfulness meditation moments. That's what this is all about. And, my gosh, uh, when you look at the history of my family back to 1900, when my uh, uh, grandma, great-grandma, uh, Nettie Fireisen came over from Luxembourg and uh, was in the, right there in New York uh, with uh, thousands of other people coming over. 
humility, humanity, and then love. It all gets down to love, folks. And uh, I find that living here in Lincoln County, Oregon, uh, we really care for each other here. And uh, I just, uh, we just love living here. So those are the kind of things I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into. And I'll probably uh, ask you to think about some things. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and, uh, and share with you what... Uh, what one of my father's shipmates uh, said about my dad, and, uh, and his name was Charlie Minter. I uh, spoke to Charlie uh, before he died, and uh, he was with my dad on, uh, when they commissioned the USS Belgrove uh, out of San Francisco in February of 1943, and uh, they were getting ready to go out to the South Pacific. Uh, and they were there a long time, and I'll talk about that later. So from Charlie Minter, uh, he said, he sent me an email, and he said, Steve, my name is Charlie Minter. Uh, I served under Sparks on deck of the Belgrove. I went aboard on October 43 and was assigned to the 3rd Division aft. The first chewing out I ever got was from Boats and Sparks. He had the longest arm of anyone I ever saw. He didn't fool with him. He was fair as anyone this little 17-year-old ever knew. He could get loud, too. I thought a lot of him on the ship. He was good to me as he got me a pie job on the ship but with the understanding I would keep his uniforms pressed at all time, which I did. Hope this helps, Charles R. Minner. He died uh, a short time after, but I treasure the memories of uh, getting to know him a bit on the phone. So that's uh, going to wrap it up for today. I'll uh, get back to you, but I want to say that uh, for all my uh, boomer friends and family and loved ones. What I learned in this process is that my father and my mother, with all the challenges they had in uh, growing up uh, in the Depression and the World War II, these are good people, decent people, but they all made mistakes like me and the rest of us but they were good people. And I want you to remember that when you uh, think about your parents and all the challenges you had. So with that, 